lesson, you learned about the oxygen requirements for the human body and how oxygen is processed and used by the body. Hypoxia and trap gas disorders were described along with their effect on a pilot. The dangers of increased carbon dioxide levels and the effects on breathing and pulse rate were discussed. Hyperventilation was defined and some of the main causes and symptoms along with the treatment of hyperventilation were detailed. Altered gravity environments that can be experienced by suborbital pilots were included in this lesson. The microgravity environment and its effect on the human body was described. Following a review of g-forces, a discussion on hypergravity, including its associated physiological responses, was covered. Vision problems along with disorientation and illusions were included in this lesson. Space, motion sickness, and some tips for dealing with it were also provided. The health effects of radiation, along with an understanding of radiation dose rates and exposure limits, was included. Depending on the dosage, radiation can cause both short and long-term damage to the human body. Lastly, the sources of space radiation were described. This concludes lesson number one. Life support systems are a group of devices that allow humans to survive in outer space. Life support systems are needed to provide humans with an acceptable environment to maintain normal biological functions, to optimize human performance in the hostile environment of space, and to protect against dangers such as toxic exposure or radiation. The design of reliable, self-controlling life support systems is one of the major challenges for life scientists and engineers. In this lesson, you will learn about the following life support systems temperature and humidity control, breathing air systems, pressure control systems, anti-G suits, fire detection and suppression, and radiation monitoring and protection. Human factors is a study of how people interact with their environments, and it's about their relationships with equipment, procedures, and other people. This lesson reinforces and emphasizes those factors that should be known or considered to improve pilot safety and efficiency. Many of these factors you are already familiar with from your aviation pilot training and experiences. In this lesson you will learn about the following human factors that apply to suborbital spaceflight. Noise and vibration, movements in hypergravity, medical standards and conditioning, pilot decision making, crew resource management, and the I'm safe checklist. This threshold knowledge test includes 32 questions covering the three lessons in this ground school. Please select the most correct answer for each of the 32 questions. Question number one. Respiration consists of three phases. A. Inhalation, transformation, exhalation. B. Ventilation, transformation, utilization. C. Inhalation, transportation, exhalation. Or D. Ventilation, transportation, utilization. The answer is D. Ventilation, transportation, utilization. Question number two. Pressurized spacecraft or pressure suits are required at altitudes above A. 10 kilometers, B, 20 kilometers, C, 30 kilometers, or D, 40 kilometers. The answer is B, 20 kilometers. Question number three. Which of the following is not a type of hypoxia? A, hypoxic, B, hypemic, C. Hypotoxic D. Stagnant E. Histotoxic The answer is C. Hypotoxic. 